Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. How are you tonight? I hope you're doing well. We're going to do a little creative inspiration together. We have been doing a little bit of um, a series here uh, of fun folds. I love fun folds. I'm all about fun folds. As you know, I, as you may or may not know, I do a monthly class uh, that's called Craft Your Noon, and we do a special, unique fun fold that I create out of my brain uh, with inspiration from others and uh, share a whole bunch of cards with it. So I got some swap cards that had some fun folds in it. And I am, and yes, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late tonight, but thanks for being here. Um, and there were four <laughs> that we identified that you all told me you would like to learn how to make. So we did the first one in the last video. Um, I'll show you them all in a moment. I had my uh, Sue Stampfield Facebook group uh, people, hey people, <laughs> um, vote on which one we should do in which order. And it was hotly contested. Uh, this card that we're doing tonight was very popular. In fact, if I hadn't cut the voting off, this one would have been first. But it's all good. We're going to get to all of them. It's, it's, you know, it's all for fun, right? Fun and crafting. So very cold here in Minnesota. Um, I'm going to flip my mic around so maybe you can hear me better. Um, I hope it's warm where you are. And um, sometimes I lose stuff, you guys, on my craft desk. Does that ever happen to you? I'm crafting and I just literally had it in my hands and poof, it's gone. So um, that will happen tonight. <laughs> I 100% guarantee that will happen tonight. And we play a little game when that happens, just to make the frustration of losing things a little more fun. When I find it again, we say, found it, and we all take a sip of our beverage. So let me know what is in your cup tonight. I have some delicious ice water. Mm. Even though it's very, very frigidly cold here in Minnesota, I'm still drinking my ice water. I gotta have the ice. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna flip the camera. A little warning, my desk is a mess. I've been busy, busy, busy making tutorials and creating and just making a big fat mess. <laughs> okay, you've got tea, decaf coffee, peppermint tea. Ooh, that sounds good. Orange juice, yummy, yummy. I'm gonna flip my camera here. And we will get this party started. So I, oh, hey, look, there's the cards right there. So if you subscribe to my um, Sue Stamp Field uh, project sheets, and if you don't, you're welcome to do that. I send out free project sheets sporadically. I sent out uh, two, three yesterday, a bunch, three, I guess. Um, don't know where they are. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I've lost stuff already, you guys. Oh, found them. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> found them. Uh, so let's take a sip right to start us off. I've already lost something. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a rocky road tonight. Woo. Mm. But we will leave well hydrated, right? It's all about the hydration. All right. So um, in the email I sent out, I sent out this accordion fun fold idea that I got from demonstrator Terry Gaines. Her website is Create with Terry Gaines. She's awesome. Um, so uh, this one went out and then I uh, did a project sheet for that one. Also did a project sheet for this one. A lot of people were asking me how I colored the owls. So that is in the project sheet. And then I sent out uh, this one. Uh, the accordion, uh, um, the accordion joyful card. So both accordions, I was in an accordion uh, concertina frame of mind, I guess. So, um, so those are the ones that just went out uh, yesterday. Now I went ahead and added um, a little welcome letter to my welcome letter. You always get a welcome letter when you first subscribe. And in the welcome letter, uh, you get these two tutorials now for free. So if you missed out on that, no worries, go ahead and subscribe and you will get those. I love these owls. Um, I don't know how long these are going to last. These are free right now with a $50 purchase. They're part of Celebration. Uh, their wall supplies last, so they could sell out at any time. We don't know. All right, so let's talk about fun folds. So in our last video, 
we recreated this cute card from uh, Michelle Carlson. She was uh, inspired by demonstrator uh, Brandy Cox. And this is a, I called it a latching gatefold card. So there's a little latch there that opens up and then the card opens like that. What did I get in here? A little ribbon, <laughs> little ribbon bits. Um, so I called this the latching gatefold. And in the last video, we did this version. You did let me know in the last video that you would like to see a project sheet for this in a future project sheet email. So I've got that on my shirt list. <laughs> so this was our version um, with the uh, adorable owls. I used the same paper that Michelle did, the country floral lane paper. And you can find that video on my channel if you missed that. Now, the other ones that we've been wanting to do um, were this one, which is a standing pop-up card is the, the name of it. This one was created by um, Colette Thiesenvitz, one of my Stampfield Stars members for the Stampshire for Leaders Swap. Ugh, move stuff out of the way. Goodness, Susan, you've got too much stuff. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a fun. This is the one we're going to make tonight. We're not going to do the motorcycle version because I don't have that set. Um, we're going to do uh, um, we're going to do a different version, but um, same fold. So it'll show you hopefully some of the possibilities and the different things that you can do. And I'm just noting noticing that uh, Colette added some designer paper on the pop top of the box pop-up things. I did not do that. That's really kind of fun. Mm. All right, we're going to have to break this one down together. We'll figure it out though, won't we? We always do. Um, and then uh, in the next video, we will do this one, which is this bridge fold card. So it's got this kind of bridge piece across the front and then this inner flap opens up. This is by Dem my Stampfield Stars demonstrator, Sandy Carlson. Uh, not Sandy Carlson, Sandy Stellenberg. So um, this one will also be done. And then... After that one, we're going to do Carol Rosengren's another Stampfield Star. I have such creative people in Stampfield Stars. I got to tell you, they're awesome. Um, this one is an easel card, and it is a horizontal easel card. And I believe she was inspired by Angie Kennedy Judah for this card. So, all righty, let's get to it, shall we? Um, so, again, we're not going to use the ride on uh, bundle, which is super cool. I mean, how fun are these flames, right? <laughs> And this motorcycle has dies that where you can cut with silver paper and actually have metal parts of the silver metal parts of the bike. Just really, really cool. Um, nobody in my family is into motorcycles, so I didn't actually get this one, but it is a really cool set. Um, and then this is that uh, that metal. Um, what's it called? Mm. Jennifer, do you know the name of it? By the way, shout out to my moderator, Jennifer Walsh. She's in the comments. I'm blanking out on the name of this embossing folder, but it's metal something. Um, it it's uh, it is cool. That one I did get because any embossing folder uh, I seem to think I have to own. <laughs> so instead of the motorcycle, we're going to use the um, fragrant flowers uh, bundle and a free celebration choice called. <laughs> what is it? called uh, Favorite Flowers, I believe. So this is a gorgeous set of papers. I can actually show it to you better on these cards that we did a few videos back. Um, we did some Z-fold cards that just kind of showed off every pattern of this paper. So um, this one just kind of shows you all the different patterns in this pack free with a $50 order. This one um, is kind of a hidden gem in the Celebration catalog. Uh, I feel like a lot of people miss this one. It's just not photographed as striking as it is in person. It's hard to get black background things to, to photograph nicely, but it is absolutely stunning. One of the papers um, die cuts uh, from using these same dies, the fragrant flower dies. Oh, look, I got ink on it. Mm, what a shocker. Um, that's this piece right here. You can die cut either this bouquet or this bouquet with uh, this die right here. And you can die cut these smaller flowers. So, um, you know, if you're in a rush, uh, you can just die cut them and go. You can also, of course, stamp them on watercolor your own if you prefer. Or when you run out of paper, you've got that option. I also love these great big bold greetings in the set. They stamp absolutely beautifully. 
and really pop on a card. So let's go ahead and break down our card. While I'm doing that, I would love your input on our card. I, I love to ask my viewers to help me design the card. And um, I would like to know if you would like us to do the Fresh Freesia version. You can just type purple. You don't have to spell Fresh Freesia. I struggle with that one. Or if you, if you want to do the Petal Pink Calypso Coral version. So put purple or pink in the comments to let me know which one we're doing. And let's bring in our cardstock. Oh my goodness. I got, I got hoot hoot stamps. I got stamping. I didn't put anything away from Sunday night. What the heck? I just went right to doing the tutorials for our, uh, the, the uh, project sheets for our email. Hmm. So I got a big mess. Uh, all right. While you all are voting, I am going to grab our cardstock base and let's do a little bit of scoring here and talk measurements. All right, so we have a piece of cardstock. Now, I do want to tell you that I slightly changed it from Colette's version. I did go online and I did some searching and I found um, Create with Christy. I'm not sure. Let me find um, let me find her name. She did a, uh, yeah, Create with Christy is the name of her blog. And uh, she did a tutorial for this, I think, on Split Coast Stampers. Um, and I went with her measurements, which are a little bit, um, taller. Christy Folk is her name. And the reason I did that is, um, I, it was a teeny bit easier when I was placing this piece, um, to have it. Uh, so on hers, the back is the same height as the, the, uh, this pop-up piece, if that makes sense. So, just to let you know, this one is a, a wee bit shorter than our version is going to be. Um, so I just wanted to be transparent on that. I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored scoring tool, which hopefully I have all set up for the right measurements, but I do have a cheat sheet here. So this piece is 10 and a half by four and a quarter. Um, I can tell you Colette's uh, was 10. So we're going to try a, a new thing that I tried in the last video. We're going to try it again tonight. Um, Jennifer will pop in the uh, measurements as we go here. And then at the end of the video, I have them uh, typed up in a comment, a little banner that I'll put across the bottom. So if you hang around till the end of the video, or if you're catching the replay, um, check, make sure you check the end of the video. I will hold the card still and have those that banner up so you can take a screenshot. Um, that'll get you through until that project sheet is available because I'm I'm not fast, but I am I get there eventually. All right. So we're gonna score our 10 and a half by four and a quarter inch piece at a half an inch. I, I struggle with getting in here on this half inch one. Um, one and three quarters, three and three quarters, and five. Okay, let me just rehash that. It's half inch, one and three quarters, three and three quarters, and five. And this is forming that um, box portion here and the back of our card. Okay. And then we have another piece of cardstock. Ooh, do we? Yes, I think this is it. Okay, right here. I'm going to go ahead and score this as well. Um, this is the part that forms the, the pop out, oh, excuse me, the pop out piece here. So that's not right, Susan. What the heck is that for? I don't know what that's for. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, chaos reigns. All right, hang on, hang on. We got it here. Same where maybe if not, we'll cut another one. Okay, here we go. Uh, yes, five by three. Yes, yes, we have a winner. All right, this piece is five inches by three inches, and we are going to score it at a half an inch. Again, so same as we did on the first one. And one and three quarter inch, again, same as we did on the first one. And that's it. So this one is uh, three inches by five, and we squared it at a half inch and one and three quarters inches, okay? And I have not eaten supper yet, and I'm really hungry. So if my stomach growls, just pretend you can't hear it, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's bring in our bone folder here. 
and let's take a look at what we have. We're going to go ahead and fold. Now remember, we're making a box, so all the folds, we don't do any accordion folding on this one. What on earth did I get on there? Oh, it's just a little lint, a little fuzzy, no biggie. Uh, let me get a bone folder. Just had a bone folder. Up, oh, found it. It was under the stamp set. Let's take a sip, everybody. Hmm. Ah, all right. So we are working on our card base. Jennifer very kindly has. Oh, let's take down that banner. You guys are probably saying, Susan, take down the banner. And we're going to put up another banner. So how about that? All right. Uh, Jennifer has the card base right here. So this card base is 10 and a half by four and a quarter scored at uh, a half inch, one and three quarters, three and three quarters and five. And we're going to just fold on all of those. Okay. And we're all folding all the same direction, not accordion folding this time, which makes it super easy because we're just kind of making a little box shape. All right, so we've got these all folded and you can see where we're going with this. Now, before I stick this down, I am going to take a piece of paper. Um, okay, we need to figure out if we're doing pink or purple. Um, I'm gonna say, boy, it's pretty tight, pretty close. I'm reading both the Facebook and the YouTube comments here. And okay, let's go pink. Now let's go purple. Yeah, I see one more purple there. Up, oh, yep, a purple just a late, late voting purple just came through. So we're gonna go purple. So what I have here is a piece of um cardstock, fresh freezer cardstock. I don't know why am I getting little things on here. Sorry, this isn't even going to show, but it's bugging me. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is four inches by three and three quarter inches, and I'm going to just adhere it inside uh, towards the top of the card. So this seems really big, doesn't it? Gosh, it seems huge. Yeah, I think it's bigger than we need. I think part of it's going to be covered up. Hmm. Interesting. We'll find out. I've not made this, so we're just learning together, aren't we? All right, I'm going to take my seal here. And I'm going to pop this on. So four by three and three quarters. That is not right. That is a wrong dimension. Okay, scratch that, guys. That is not what this is. This is four and an eighth. <laughs> Jennifer, don't type that one. It's four and an eighth by three and seven eighths. The piece that's going to go over it, though, is uh, going to be that size. So that's this piece right here, which we are going to emboss. Okay. So I've got this piece on here and let's see. Yeah, this, this good chunk of this is going to get covered up. I don't know if I like that, you guys. Hang on. I don't know if I can get it off now. Hmm. Okay. Hang on. It's fresh adhesive. I'm hoping I can convince it to come off because I don't want it hanging below my box. All right. So I'm going to change the size. All right. We are literally making this card from the get-go. So thank you for your patience. All right. So the my, my area that I have to work with is three and a half by four and a quarter. So I just need to do a little bit of math. It's easy math. It's card math. That's the only kind of math I can do. I'm throwing that piece away because it's yucky. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is the fun and joy of taking a swap card and... Uh, disassembling it basically without actually disassembling it. So I'm going to go four and an eighth and three and three eighths. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths. Sorry, eight inches I have to count out. It's sad, I know, but true. All right. 
And then the piece that I'm going to be sticking on top of that also needs to be changed. This is what we're going to emboss. And so it's the right width already. It's four inches, but this is now three and a quarter. All right. <laughs> Sorry, snobby designer here. I didn't want that purple showing down below my box. That was just not making me happy, guys. It wasn't making me happy. <gasps> oh, I'm so much happier now. Yes, yes, this is what I want to do. All right, so let me recap that since I made a big hot mess of it. It was uh, the layer piece is four and a quarter by three and three eighths. And this piece is four by three and a quarter. Okay, this piece we're going to emboss. So let's do that right now. I would love your input in the comments. We're going to use the um, eucalyptus embossing folder. Mm, there's another E name involved with that, but I don't remember it. Um, <laughs> the eucalyptus. Uh, okay, let me take the card base down. Jennifer has <laughs> dealt with my craziness. Oh, wait, whoops, that's the wrong one. Sorry. All right, so this is the layer. The fresh freesia layer is that four and an eighth by three and an eighth. And then the embossed piece is four by three and an eighth. Now you also, instead of an embossed piece, you absolutely could put designer series paper here. You wouldn't need the layer. Many, many choices, but we're going to do embossing. So I would love you to tell me if we're going to use the bouquet or if we're going to use the hanging leaves. Okay. I think either one would look nice, but I would love your input there. And while you're uh, voting on that, I'm going to bring in our embossing machine. I'm going to grab this adorable little mini machine. This little mini machine um, is in Boho Blue. It is an exclusive um, and it is just available for uh, demonstrators who are um, or uh, customers who want to try out the starter kit. When you purchase the starter kit, you get uh, during celebration, you get $175 of product for $99. Or you can choose this option and get $175 in product plus the mini machine for $129. Mini machine alone is normally $65. So it is an amazing deal. And you can give it a try being a demonstrator. You don't have to do classes or videos like I do. You can literally just be a hobby demonstrator and just be a discount diva and get that great discount. I am getting the wrong plates because I'm embossing. Are you guys going, Susan, what the heck are you doing? We don't, we don't know what Susan's doing tonight. Uh, okay. I have to look at the, <laughs> I have to look at the words and I want this one because it says use with 3d embossing folders, not this light gray one, which says use with standard embossing folders. I have a 3d folder. And so it tells me my sandwich here is number four and number one with my embossing folder in between. And it looks like it is the elegant eucalyptus. That's what it's called, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Elegant eucalyptus. I knew it was a, an acronym there. Or uh, what do you call that when it's both start with the same letter? Um, I am seeing more hanging leaves than I am bouquet, although I do have a lot of bouquet votes. So we're going to go with this. That is a really cool folder, isn't it? Let's see what it looks like. All right. So we're going to take our piece of four by whatever the heck I ended up being on that. Um, <laughs> four by three and a quarter, right? And we're going to put it in this folder. You can see it's going to be just perfectly sized. And we're going to line this up. Now, part of our leaves will be hidden because of the way our um, this card is, but that's okay. It'll still look amazing. And so I'm just going to crank this through and emboss that piece. So um, it is not moving, and it's because I didn't stagger my plates. So let me show you what that means. I have them both lined up, and it doesn't like that. It prefers to have something to grab onto. So I'm going to extend that top one over and have it grab that and there it goes and i apologize i'm probably jiggling the camera all right so let's see what it looks like shall we all right here are the hanging leaves super cute all right so we're gonna go ahead and put my embossing folders aside 
And I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of this piece and adhere it to that fresh Frisia piece. Okay. All right. And then let's go back to our card base. So again, that box part is going to be going up here. This is going to go at the top. So let's put this down. And I, you know, had that little boo-boo. Well, I was following directions, but I decided I, I didn't, I didn't want it that long. So um, I did make a change there. And because I had some stuff on here that was sticky, I'm just feeling to make sure I don't have any residual um, adhesive down there because um, that might glue my cards closed. But we're good. I don't feel anything. So let's uh, go ahead and get this assembled. So I'm going to take. Uh, we have these different sections here. I want to put some adhesive on this section right here. So let me grab my tear and ah, oh, found it. It was under the stamp set. All of the adhesive is hiding under the stamp set tonight. Let's take a little sip here. Mm. Ah, so refreshing. All right, we're going to put some tear and tape on this. You could also use multi-purpose liquid glue. Uh, you could also use an adhesive. I would recommend a stronger adhesive. Uh, if you're going to use a tape runner and it's going to be the Stampin' Up! one, I would probably use Seal Plus for this. Because we're making that box shape and this is going to be popping up and down, you don't want it to, to uh, fall off, right? So we're going to fold it so that we have this section and this section up okay and we're going to remove this piece right here okay and then i am going to fold this flat on the very last score line i'm going to fold this flat and press so i now have the back of the card showing and I'm pressing down and I'm adhering that box in place. Okay, so there is the, uh, the, the stand up portion of our card. This makes it stand. And now we're going to do that upper section that we get to have the fun decorating with. Now, again, um, Colette uh, did some designer paper here, which is really fun addition. Um, do you want to do that? Let me know in the comments if we want to do that because we can. We have that capability. While you're voting on that, I do have a piece of designer paper that I'm going to put on here. So let me grab that. That piece is four inches long. Well, it's one and three quarters tall by four inches long. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. Okay, so that is that decorative piece on the front. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of designer series paper up here. Let's just stick with the same pattern because I happen to have a piece right here that I can use. So that is going to be uh, what? Well, we don't know. We got to measure it, Sue. And you lost your ruler. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me, you guys? I just had it. Do you see it? Oh, here it is. Ah, oh, it's hiding under the bone folder. All right. <clears throat> We're having another sip tonight. Mm. I knew it was going to be. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a thirsty night, guys, because it's just been a little crazy here today. All right. So this piece is one and a quarter by four and a quarter, right? So we want to do um, probably, let's see what she did. I'm guessing she did a one. No, she did one and an eight. By four and an eight. Okay, I'm going to actually match this one. So I'm going to go, let's try four by one and see what we think. Why not? Let's give it a go. All right, let's grab our handy dandy paper trimmer here. And four, but it's already at four. So all we need to do is cut it down to one. And let's see what we think. We might say, mm, no, we don't like that. 
but I bet we won't. It's just going to be a little something extra. So we did four by one. That's cute, isn't it? I like it. All right, so let's go ahead and this front piece, Jennifer has our measurements of four by one and three quarters. And then our top piece, we ended up with four by one. So we're gonna grab this piece now. And this is the five inch by three inch piece. Let's see. Oh boy, Jennifer, I don't know if I can scroll back that far to find that measurement. Um, that's okay. I'll have it up at the end. Um, it's five by three and it was scored at a half an inch and one and three quarters. So we're going to fold on those. All right. And so this piece is going to attach to the front and this is going to be our pop-up portion. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put some tear and tape on I gotta, I gotta think before I stick, right? <laughs> We're gonna put a parent tape on this portion and on this portion. So I'm just gonna fold it closed like this so that I've got my two sides up that have the tear and tape on them. And again, you could use multi-purpose liquid glue if you prefer, or a strong adhesive tape runner whatever your choice, your personal preference is. So can you see how that's going to attach? So what we're going to do here is we're going to fold this flat and we're going to peel off just the top one for starters. Okay, I've got that top one peeled off. And then this is going to go in our envelope. You know what? I think I can go ahead and peel them both off. What the heck? Let's give it a go. Oh my gosh, I'm scared, you guys. What if I messed up all the measurements and it doesn't work? Oh, wouldn't that be embarrassing? Okay, I'm going to collapse it up like it would go in the envelope. And I'm going to line up the upper portion with the top of my card. This is why I chose to go with the taller version. Um, because it's just a little easier for me to just line that up with the top. and press down and you could do these in different sections like you could leave that adhesive on let's see if it worked oh it worked yay hallelujah <laughs> awesome all right Whew. that was that was nerve-wracking okay so we have our our card ready to decorate now um colette these in bits uh she also put some dsp here on the top should we put some DSP here on the top? You let me know in the comments. While you are letting me know that, I'm going to pull out my designer paper here. And I am going to cut around one of these flowers. Now, I'm not going to fussy cut it because there's a die for that. I'm just going to very roughly cut out the flower I want. We're going to die cut it. Now, again, there. if you get the stamp set, you could stamp this and watercolor it or color it with the blends or your color of choice. Um, absolutely could do that. But you also could do it this way. So sure, you bet. Okay, awesome. There, we have some, might have some Minnesotans here. That's a very, sure, you bet. That's a very Minnesotan kind of thing to say, right? You betcha. Actually, we would say you betcha. All right. So I am going to change up our sandwich here. This is the sandwich that we used for the 3D embossing folder, four and three, or four and one, Susan, four and one. But instead, I'm going to go to the die cutting, which is one and two of the number two plates number two right there all right so that's what we want we've got those in play got our paper but we need a die here so let's grab the fragrant flowers bundle i'm going to grab out my dies here i want this great big one this also has some nice labels that match um the thanks, the hello, and some the friend and love can go on these little labels here. Some leaves, some other things in there, and a cool kind of textury thing I haven't even tried yet. We'll have to try that in a future video, won't we? All right, so let's line this baby up. 
and it just perfectly fits in the mini machine. Um, I do have the large machine. I use both, uh, but I really like just keeping that the big one I have to keep across the room because it doesn't fit on my stamp desk. So I like that this one is um, always at hand for when I need to just cut small things and I'm too lazy to walk across the room. <laughs> so, all right, so let's stick this down. I like to use post-it notes. Um, we do have a magnetic plate in the catalog, but there were, um, it's actually, um, there were issues. So um, we do not have a magnet plate at this time. So we just, uh, use post-it notes and, and muddle through that way. Again, I'm going to stagger my plates so that it gives my machine something to grab here. And let's go ahead and crank this through. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Sorry, a little wiggly, a little wiggly. All right, let's put this away. Looked like a lot of people um, are want to get that one, one way to go for having that um, designer series paper. I feel like we should do the same one that we had on the other spot. So I'm going to grab that out of the package here. I have a whole big one. All right, let's uh, pop this out. Let's see how we did. All right. <laughs> Really wants to stick to that uh, post-it note. We'll just throw that on the desk here. We'll just add it to the mass, right? And there we have our gorgeous flower. Put the die back in the sleeve, though, so that I don't have to do a found it with that. Okay, there we go. All right. So, um, by the way, these same products are one of the things that we used on the last Crafternoon in January. We did, here in January, we did the Crafternoon. Uh, pop-up slider card with these same gorgeous products. I am working on the tutorial bundle for this. I showed you a whole bunch of cards using the same fun fold and uh, it's in process guys. I'm hoping to have it up for you next week. So stay tuned. If you uh, subscribe at SueStampField.com and click on blog, subscribing to the blog, that is where this will, the tutorial bundle will first show up for this. Um, so check that out. All right, back at it. Sorry, I just happened to come across that in my bucket of things here. All right, so let's go back to our card. Uh, Sue, you forgot what you're doing. Yes, I'm cutting a piece, but I don't know what size I'm cutting. I know it's going to be one inches because it'll be the same size as this one, right? One inch, but how, how long? Uh, two and three quarters by one. Grab our handy dandy trimmer again be so awesome if that was the right size but it's not it's not that's okay the paper is free and I have lots of it okay love a free paper again the paper all the celebration things are moving into February tomorrow can you even believe it and uh, if you place a $50 order in February, you're going to qualify for the February Crafternoon class. I just cut that too wide. I cut it at four. Goodness gracious. What did I say, guys? Mm. I said two and three quarters, not four. All right. Let's try that. That looks more like it. And that's going to go right up there. Gosh, I got kind of a big flower on that pattern. Is that bugging anyone else? Probably not. I'm going to go with some little bit smaller flowers. If you haven't discovered it now, I'm super picky, you guys. Super picky. Um, I just think it will show off better with some smaller flowers. Let's see and what we think. Yes, I like that better. All right, we're going to go with that. Otherwise, it would have just been one great big flower, which would have been fine, but... I'm being picky tonight. Okay, let's go ahead and stick this on. So I'm just going to squish it. <laughs> Pop that on. So fun how it's squishable. All right, so there we've got just following um, Colleen's guideline there of adding that little bit of extra something something on the top. I really like that. You guys made a good call there. 
I agree. And then we've got our flowers that are going on the front here. So let me just decide which direction. I think that's okay right there, isn't it? It could go here. They don't, they actually can even pop up over the piece. That is totally fine. Um, let's go ahead and grab some dimensionals and stick that on. All right, so I'm going to put, oh, let's put a bunch on, you guys. Let's put a bunch on. Jennifer's got the dimensions. Oh, my goodness. All right. Stamp sets, you can pick cling or photopolymer. Which is better? Mm, that is a good question. And it's not an easy answer, but really good question. So uh, what, uh, what she's referring to, um, Sylvia is referring to in the catalog, some of the products can be purchased in either photopolymer or, um, or the regular, let me grab one, the regular cling, okay? And like, um, what's one? Let me, I'm trying to grab a cling set. Here we go. Okay, like this one. And it's, um, some of them are offered both ways. It's just kind of something they're trying out. Uh, a lot of people have a preference. It is totally up to you. Um, if you like having a see-through stamp that you can better line up, um, then the photopolymer is a great choice. They're the same price. So it's not a pricing issue. It's more of a personal preference issue. Um, if you like um, the more traditional orange rubber stamp, those if those work better for you, you're not worried about lining things up, then you can go with that. There isn't really a wrong choice. Um, they both work great, but some people do have a personal preference. So in this situation, I'm going to say it's more personal preference reigns than uh, which was works better, if that makes any sense at all. I am, I'm going to slide this up just a little bit because I want room for embellishments. Are you shocked? No, of course not. All right. So I've got my flower on the front there. It pops up. It stands for a display. Maybe there we go. Stands for display. We've got our, our flowers popped up there and then we're going to take our, um, our uh, embellishment. So I lost my train of thought. Let's grab those. I'm going to use the opaque adhesive back gems here. You also could use the um, iridescent rhinestones. Those would be a good choice as well. I'm stalling because I can't find my up. Oh, found it. Take your pick tool was hiding away. It was hiding. So I'm just going to add some embellishments. Now on this card, as I look at this, this is a little busy. If you don't like that, you could do the DSP up here and you could put an embossed panel down here. Let me just, um, I have a embossed panel sitting around here. That would give you, um, you know, just kind of show you what that would look like. Um, that would really just focus on those flowers then. So that's another option. Um, you also could, for this piece down here, do a more solid pattern. If, again, you found it to be a little busier than you like. It's totally, again, personal preference. Right? You, my preference is I don't like where I put that. <laughs> All right, so there we have our embellishments. And then we have, now you might be wondering, okay, how do, where do I write on this card? So for this card, we put a panel on the back, like Colette did here, that we can stamp on and decorate. And that panel that goes on the back is your standard four by five and a quarter. And so that would go here. Uh oh, Houston, I have a problem. All right, do you see my problem? Oh, who sees my problem? My flowers, I stuck them above the edge. And you can't do that on this taller design because it will stick above the card and it won't go in my envelope and that won't work. So it's okay. Everything is, is fixable, right? Everything is fixable. So we can go down, but we can't go up. We have a... Um, 
a do not cross line right there that is our score line, if that makes sense. So I can um, I can go down below, I can go off to the sides. Uh oh, I just lost a gem. Where'd it go, you guys? <laughs> oh, it it went underneath. It's being shy. All right, you come back here. Found it. That was a tough one. <laughs> that was a tough found it. I need a beverage sip for that one. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So there we have our uh, card. We've got our greeting here, our inside piece here. Um, now, one reason on this one that you could go with the cling instead of the photopolymer is um, if you ha um, have any difficulty inking up photopolymer um, and getting a really solid image, you can go with the cling. Sometimes you get a, a more solid image. Um, I usually um, use a cushion underneath so that I get a solid image with I, with the, the clear. Does that make sense? Um, let's grab our black ink pad here. And we're just going to put hello on the back side. The uh, Memento Tuxedo Black Ink Pad is a felt pad. So I am doing a whole heck of a lot of inking here. All right. And I'm just, oh gosh, I missed. That's the other thing with the uh, photopolymer, you can see if you missed a spot. <laughs> it looked like the upper spot of that uh, H I did not quite catch all the way. So let's see how I did here. All right, there we've got our hello. And you know what? What the heck? Let's add in. We could add in uh, a stamped flower on here. Or, or. We could even do a die cut flower right out of that paper. Um, that would be cute. Do I leave room for it? Maybe. I think it has to go down here. That's okay. I don't, I don't like to write very much inside of cards. So uh, the more I cover up, the less I have to write, right? Oh, just have room for love, Susan. There we go. Okay, perfect. Let's grab our uh, card here and I might change my mind on those embellishments. I'm kind of going crazy for the um, iridescent rhinestones right now. So I think I might change that out because we can do that, right? When we're creating the card, we can say, nah, I want to do something a little different, right? So there's the back side of our card. Here's the front. I'm going to just grab the... Here and while I am fixing, <laughs> I'm going to zoom out a little bit here because I'm super duper close. And I am going to, ooh, would the black dimensionals work better on the black cardstock? So black dimensionals are really helpful whenever you can see them from the side. And you're right, this one's because it's standing up. Oh, you are so right. Black would have been perfect on this. I forget about them. They're in my drawer here. And sometimes I just forget they're even there. I just I, I keep the other ones on my desk. I should put a put some right on my desk, right? I'm gonna take these off and let's see what we think of the iridescent rhinestones. And you can let me know in the comments which you prefer. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pop up uh, the comment uh, do, 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 the banner here. Let's see. Whoops. I'm going to hide that comment. I'm going to go to banners. All right, let's review and make sure I have this correct, everybody. <laughs> so our card base for this card was 10 and a half, uh, excuse me, 10 and a half by four and a quarter, four and a quarter by 10 and a half. And we scored it at a half inch, one and three quarter inches and three and three quarters inches. That was the, the base of the card. And then that pop-up piece was five by three, scored at half inch and one and three quarter. The designer series paper, um, oops, that is not correct. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna hide that and I have to edit it because uh, we didn't do designer paper at the top. We certainly could have. And then we changed our mind. Susan changed her mind on the size. So let me just correct that. 
I'll put embossed. All right, and save. And let's see if we got it right there. That looks better. So that uh, the embossed part up here is a three and three quarters, uh, three and a quarter by four. You could also do designer series paper there. Now I did add a fresh freesia la layer. I didn't squeeze that in here. That fresh freesia layer was three and three eighths by, no, yes, three and three eighths by four and an eighth. And then the designer paper at the bottom was one and three quarter by four. Optional, um, if you want to add designer paper at the top of these, uh, we went one inch by four here and we went uh, one inch by two and three quarters there. Okay, again, I will do a project sheet for this. I'm gonna pop on our dimensions here and I'm gonna hold the card still, or not our dimensions, <gasps> our iridescent rhinestone jewels. I like these a little better. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I thought the other ones are maybe a little too much color and took away from my flower a little bit. All right, so we've got our iridescent rhinestones on there. Those are just a little more subtle. And I'm going to just set it flat, move all the stuff, make it pretty for you. Okay, <laughs> dimensional papers do not want to move. And we'll, we'll put both side by side. Now, again, our card base was 10 and a half inches long. If you want the shorter version, which is what uh, Colette did, then hers is 10 inches instead of 10 and a half. Okay. I'm just going to check your comments here. You like the iridescent. You think they look better. I like them better too. They're just a little more subtle, right? Um, you also, there's a ribbon opportunity <laughs> right there uh, with the fresh freesia ribbon. That would also be really pretty on this card. So um, I will do, um, I'll do a project sheet for this one. In the project sheet, I think I'll do an option of what this would look like just with an embossed piece in black so that that flower can really shine. Um, and yeah, we'll see what we think. I'm trying to push these above the, uh, above the dimensions there. So, so much fun. Thank you all for helping me design the cards tonight. I appreciate your input. Um, and, uh, you know, freestanding cards are just the best, right? So this one, you just got to make sure that it's all, um, un, un, flattened from being in the envelope and it pops right up. And yep, whoever said I should have used black dimensionals, you're totally right. See that they would just disappear there, right? So there are our two different versions of this fun fold card. You can see that all the dimensions are the same. The only change is that hers was a little bit shorter. And so when you stick on this piece, it, you just have to know it goes a half inch above. So next video, we will be taking on um, Sandy Stellenberg's card here, this fun bridge fold card. So I look forward to sharing that with you on this coming Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time right here on my Sue Stampfield YouTube channel, or you might be watching me over on Facebook. Let's see here. I'm going to hide the banner and go to this camera. So I hope you'll join me for this one. Um, we're going to change it up again. We'll use some different products and oh, I don't even know what it'll be yet, but I think it will be awesome. <laughs> There's so many opportunities with that type of card, right? We can do, you know, sky's the limit. So we'll play with some fun uh, creative dies. So again, um, reminder to subscribe to my C-Stamp Field uh, free project sheets if you would like these project sheets when they're completed. Uh, one just went out yesterday. When you subscribe, you're going to get some free project sheets for those other fun folds I showed earlier. And I think that's it, everyone. Have a great rest of your night. Happy almost February tomorrow. Uh, yay. And uh, one more month of celebration. So don't miss out on the great deals, both with the joining special or the free gifts with purchase. Have a great evening and we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Bye-bye.